Hi, this is John Langley. Welcome to Tech Talk, episode number seven. Today we're going to review Google Calendar in a way that we can kind of keep ourselves more organized. Today we're going to look at Google Calendar. So to start off, make sure you're logged into your account and then go ahead and go to the Apps Grid. Click on Google Calendar. And a couple things I want to show you as we start off is there are different views to calendar. You can look at it in the day mode, week, month, four day, and in an agenda mode. Whichever mode you are in, when you click on more, you can print that calendar view. So if I want to print a month view, I click on month, and then I can print a month view of that calendar. Okay, there's one thing that I want to point out that makes life a little bit easier. If you go to the settings wheel and drop down to labs, there is one lab that I do recommend that you enable, and that is the hide morning and night lab. Once you have enabled that, you can go back to save. The rest of them, um, it's up to you. That's the only one I would recommend. And what that does for us is it gives us a frame of time that we can hide on our calendar. So that time frame when we're asleep, we don't need to have calendar events showing. So we can adjust that. So if we want to have that go till 5 a.m. or 7 a.m., whatever we want to hide, we can do that. Same thing on the bottom end. If we're on that, we can scroll down and we can adjust the bottom end. If we have extracurriculars or anything like that, we can adjust that so it just hides from 10 to 12 or whatever we need to do. That way, the bulk of our day is going to be visible on our calendar. Okay, the next thing I want you to look at is over on the side where it has my calendars, it has a little drop down arrow. If that's not open, you can click on it. The top one is going to be you. Okay, so this is my practice account. It's called LCN Planes. So that's why that's showing right here. Any events I create on that calendar are going to be this color. If I'd like to change that color, I click on the little drop down arrow and then I can change the color of those events. And we'll show you what that looks like in just a second. When we start doing other events, uh, we're going to add the AB schedule for the school, and I'm going to show you how to add any of the extracurricular calendars that are on the district website. Those will show up down here on other calendars. Okay, as we get going, there are a couple different ways to add a, a calendar event. One of the easiest ways is to go to the time, click in the time slot that we would like to add an event, and it's going to pop up. Right away, we see we have the option to choose between event, reminder, and appointment slots. Most of the time, we're going to be looking at events. If we want to do reminders, those are the reminders that are similar to what we talked about when we looked at Google Keep. Uh, Google Keep does integrate with it, so it is the same reminder. So we start off, we give a name to our event. So we're going to have milk and cookies today at 10 o'clock and I can just hit create. Okay, so it's right there. Notice that it matches the color. Okay, again, if I didn't like that color and I wanted to change the color, I can just come down and I can pick another color. If I'd like to edit that event, maybe it's at the wrong time, I can drag and drop it. Notice it's going in half hour increments. Or I can click on it and hit edit event. Notice I also have the option to delete it. So if I hit edit event, that's where I can go in and do a lot of fine tuning. I can change my event to a specific time. So if I want 10, 16, notice that it's default is set at an hour. So if I only want that to last for a half hour, I can change it. Or if I want it to only last for a specific amount of time, say I only want it to last for four minutes, I can change that to 10, 20. Okay. I can set a beginning and end date if I'd like to. I can also make it an all day event. So if I check the all day button, it will do an all day event. There's a lot of other little bells and whistles on here that I'm not going to talk about. If you want to know about those, you can bring me in. I can talk in more details. We also have a notification section at the bottom. So if I need more time to get to my event, I can add that in. Um, sometimes when you create an event from one of the other methods, it does not add the notification. So if, um, it's always good to go back and check and make sure if you want to be notified of your event that it's there. Okay, so we have one event in that way. I can also use the create button. When I hit the create button, notice it goes straight to the uh, edit mode that we're used to seeing. So that's good. Everything is the same from there. So we can actually just key in everything just like we need to. The other one is this little drop down. 
called quick add. On the quick add, I can just type in what I want. So if I said milk and cookies on Saturday at 11.10. Since I didn't specify AM or PM, it's going to assume AM because we're in the morning. Milk and cookies set up on Saturday. It's right there. Okay, notice it put my default notification time of 10 minutes on there. So if I want to change that, I need to change it. Okay, if you have a mobile phone, you also have the option to do some of these things. So I'm going to show you some screenshots real quick. And we're going to see what that looks like. So if I go into the mobile phone, um, if it's Android, obviously Google Calendar is already on there. If I do have an iPhone, I need to make sure that I, I download the Google Calendar app. Apple still doesn't play nice. Uh, we'll do your regular calendar, but if you add the AB schedule and the school calendars, extracurricular calendars, it will not show anything that's in that other calendar list. So the Google Calendar is what you're going to have to do if you, if you do have an iPhone. Um, you do have the same kind of views. So as we look at that, you can hit the settings bar that's in the top left. It brings down and you've got the different modes you can look at. Remember this search function on the settings bar. That's going to be important. And also notice that we have our calendars. As we scroll down, we can see all those different calendars. Now, this is my actual school calendar. And my the month view on the phone is kind of crazy to look at because I usually have a pretty full calendar. So um, I usually just look at that three-day three day mode. So if you have a lot of events, the month mode is kind of crazy. To create an event, you have that little plus that's in the bottom corner. When you click on it, this is what comes up. So if you want to create an event, reminder, or the phone, it has a goal. So it's a little bit different. It's kind of wacky, but um, you can check that out if you want to. When you create an event from your phone, it's pretty self-explanatory. You enter the title. Make sure you're on the, the uh, calendar that you'd like to work on. If you want to create an all-day event, you have a toggle switch. Otherwise, you enter the date and the time. And you also have the option to add a notification at the bottom before you save it. You want to use the reminder function on the phone it's kind of neat because it gives you suggestions for your reminders or you can just type in exactly what you want if i'm getting ready to edit an event so i go back into an event on my phone it has this little pencil to edit so anytime you're looking at a google product google docs or keep we, we remember seeing that pencil to go into edit mode so that's going to be there this is the goal. If you actually choose to, to insert a goal, has uh, the top ones are exercise skill and stuff like that. I have not played with those, so if you want to check those out, you can. Um, some of the students said they played with the exercise one, and it was okay. Okay, let me flip back, and then we'll come back to this one. Okay, so we get back to the, the settings here. We're going to look at adding in one of those calendars. The, so we're going to go to www.ppcusd8.org. Now, if you're, if you're a high school student, high school teacher, it's probably easier to go to that school. If you're not, you can probably pick them all up from the district calendar. I'm going to go ahead and show this from the high school calendar. The district calendar, by the way, is right at the bottom. Okay, I am going to show you from the high school calendar because it does not have the elementary and middle school stuff dumped into it. So you're better off going into the, the high school page. Scroll down to the calendar. Now, the calendar does have a week view and a month view. Okay. Now, I'm going to go ahead down to the bottom right. It has plus Google Calendar. When I click on that, it's going to take me back to my calendar. And it's going to give me the option to add all these calendars to my calendar. They're going to show up in the other calendars I add them. So the ones I want to add for sure, I want to add that A, B schedule so I know what the A days and B days are. And you can see that they're populating as I click on them. I want to add the PPHS calendar. That's going to give me the main events going on at the high school. And I also want to get this district calendar, the PPC, C, PPC USD 8 calendar, because that's going to give me the days off and those kind of things. Okay. If I have any sporting events that I'd like to add to my calendar, so for instance, if I wanted to add um, the boys soccer calendar, follow across and add it, 
those are all going to show down here. Whatever color the calendar is, that's the event that's going to correspond to it. So boys soccer is the light green, their past events. If I hit month view, I can see them a little better. Notice that if it is a specific time, it has a time next to it. If it is an all day event, let me go back to week view, it's going to show up at the top or as just a bar. If you have any sporting events or anything like that, they are going to show up on the week view uh, at the top bar, high school events, stuff like that. Those are the ones that Mrs. Greer has on her calendar. That's her style. She'll put the title, we'll have the event, and it'll also have the time. So she likes all day events, uh, everything to be up there. So her calendar does not have anything down in that the time section. Okay, so if you guys have any other questions as you go through, you can let me know. And just as a quick reminder, remember that settings bar, we can also go down and make sure we check box those calendars that we want to show, the other calendars. So as soon as we add them, we might have to go in and add the checkbox so they show up on our calendar. Now, the other cool thing, last thing to show you guys, remember that did have a search in the settings. If you type in your search, all of your events, as I was going through the PACE classes talking to freshmen, those events showed up so I knew what to do. Okay, I can also do that kind of search right up here, and all those events are going to show up so I know where I've got to be. Okay, once again, if you want to go into some more details on calendars, sharing calendars uh, with, with other people, you can share with individuals, share as a, a public calendar so you can have a class calendar or a team calendar, those kind of things. Let me know and I can come and work with you in more details.